Uh, fluke. Uh, yeah, anyway. Anyway, we got Woodman and Colfax and Dakota and Demma and freaking Vinny and uh, Frumpy and Goober and Kozu and Pox, Poxified. What's up, Poxman? I haven't heard from you for a while. I haven't, haven't seen you chatting here in the chat for a while. What's going on there, Pox? He's not even highlighted, like, in bold or anything. Yeah, no, he's like away. Uh, yeah. There's, there's Anti here jumping on in. And we got Pwn Sauce and Phantom. He has arrived. He's arrived on time. Yeah. So, um, you know what this is. What was it today? Second? Today? Yes. Two, 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 two and a half weeks till our 10th anniversary. But wow. leading leading on up into that 10th anniversary. Oh, she's got the video. She's on the right place. Cool, Grammy. Anyway, so um, <laughs> leading on up into that, we have to do our annual fun drive. Uh Fun yep. drive, fund drive, <laughs> to pay for our to pay for our, our servers and and uh, such things. Um, so um, you know, yeah. Uh, so I, I, all I'm going to say, and I don't really have too much to say about it. You know where the donate buttons are there on 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 the on the RLM page. You can't miss it. Not the free Freedoms Network one. That goes to somewhere else. That goes that goes that goes over to Bo. It doesn't pay for RLM at all. So just the ones on on the Real Liberty Media page, and I think also on the RLM Radio XYZ page. There's probably also a uh, thing there too. But uh, yeah, this is our annual fun drive, and so donate freely and generously as you see fit. Because yes, please do. That keeps us going. That keeps us going. So, uh, anyway, that's really all i got to say about that. Yep. I'll, I'll mention it again next week, depending on what... It's just because, I mean, yeah. we don't get paid for what we do. Grimnir pays for the server and all the other things he has to, you know, do to maintain the site. Right. And so it just helps, you know, helps him out. And, and I, I already paid for the Shoutcast server for the next uh, couple years, so... Uh, next year it'll be a little less because I won't have Shoutcast to pay for. But um, right. No, it's t today's show is not about pleading for money. I'm just doing this little bit on it as well, we have to do time. on an <laughs> annual basis. <laughs> yes, once a year. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's all. Um, and, and you know, all of the uh, the people here that broadcast here that you listen to and love, uh, the Grammys and and the uh, um, flashes and the. Uh, Hal Anthony's and the uh, Gary L's and Gigi Boo's and uh, myself and the Mighty Moose Girl and uh, uh, Vinny as he comes on when he comes on and uh, anybody else that wants to do a show I, I got plenty of room for you so um. <laughs> stop all that <laughs> just talk just have fun don't be don't be don't be don't be don't be being like that. Uh, anyway, so that's all. Okay. That's all. How are you doing, Miss Moose? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I've had a little bit of a cold this week, but other than that, I'm okay. A little bit of a um, cold. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, but um, okay. So Zach, he's still he 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 was sick for like four weeks, and I went and I finally went to the doctor, right? Yeah. The reg our regular quote unquote regular doctor, and so. She wasn't at first going to prescribe an antibiotic, and I thought that was really weird that she said that because I'm like thinking to myself, lady, I've just got a ton of he's been sick for like three or four weeks, which is too long, right? Yeah. You know, there's always some, something going on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let, me, let, me, let me say something. Let me say something before you go on to that. All right. Okay. I, 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 I just remembered and I forgot about it. Grammy, don't send no money. You you pay a lot of money every – she she pays – she pays, yeah. she, she pays twenty bucks a month for the speaker, and, and 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 she's done other donations too. So let her be an example, but uh, no no more money from you, Grammy, except for your normal speaker stuff. We're cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so anyway, we go. I went to Ronald's regular doctor. She wasn't going to prescribe an antibiotic, and I'm thinking, why? Because he's been sick. I just kept on telling you he's been sick for like three to four weeks. Anyway, well, then she prescribed him some, like, an, uh, inhalers, 
and some an, an allergy med, Claritin. And then she wasn't going to prescribe the antibiotic, but she wrote it down. So anyway, the, the pharmacist just ended up giving an antibiotic, but it wasn't really the correct antibiotic. Okay. Anyway, he took that, and it seemed like he was getting better, but then all of a sudden he's sick again, right? Yeah. So then he goes to the urgent care, and the ur doctor at urgent care is like, oh, your doctor didn't give you the right medication. <laughs> you know, because when we got home or whatever, asking the doctor, I'm like, I wasn't happy with that the first time. I'm like, I wasn't happy with that diagnosis. You know what I mean? Yeah. For one thing, she wasn't going to give him an antibiotic, and she ended up giving him one, but it wasn't really the right one. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> this is why you have to, like, think for yourself. You cannot trust these these quote-unquote doctors. You cannot. Right. So anyway, that happened. So now he's on the correct antibiotic, and hopefully he'll be getting better. Because anyway, by this time, it's, he's worse now, right? Yeah. Because it's, now it's a, sin a bacterial sinus infection. So there you go. I only got one word for you. At first, they didn't say what they had. What he had, Grammy, they she wasn't going to prescribe an antibiotic. And, I mean, I, I understand if it's a viral thing, an antibiotic won't work. But after four weeks, it it, it can't be, I don't know. I got, I, got one, doctor, I, got, but I got one word for you, Moose. What? Echinacea. Oh, well, I've been taking that. Yeah, but I mean, I, like I you, said, I've had a little bit of a cold. You've been taking you, you've but been taking. That's all I've had all winter so far. Knock on wood. I mean, I've been taking an echinacea every day. Yeah, twice a day. But what about the kid? He could take it. How do you, you try to get a seventeen-year-old to take echinacea? Now? I, 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 that would probably be a felony or something. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. He, he, he got it. I did to do a fucking lot of convincing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I I don't know, but um, that I I mean that's uh, that's um, I, I mean he it would have it it didn't matter if it's bacterial or viral in, in that case. Uh, it, it'll handle both of those situations. Right. So, exactly. Um, and, and, and he would have been cleared up in four weeks. I mean, he'd been cleared up in uh, five days, maybe. You know. I don't know. Echinacea doesn't seem to work that fast for me. Maybe, I mean, I don't maybe, know. Maybe, I, I just, maybe. I don't know how to dose myself. You know what I mean? I just freaking take two a day, twice a day. Oh, well, you, you may be buying the wrong type. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, what's what I have right now? Yeah, I, I, I only take it when I, when I'm, I don't take it every day. No, I've been taking it like the last couple of weeks because I feel like there's all these people around me. Yeah. And like I said, I have a little bit of a cold, so I've been taking. Yeah. Well, maybe you need to get it from a different brand. I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, maybe. Um, but, uh... But, so, anyway, that I, I was like just, the, uh, like, really... What is, what's it called? It's called, uh, Nature's Way Premium Herbal Echinacea. I think that's what I have. Nature, Nature's Way Premium Herbal. Uh, it's, uh, 400... I'll check it out. 400 milligram capsules. No, I don't take it every day, man. Like, not all year long. Certified organic. Okay, no. <laughs> Whatever. It's not liquid. I don't take the liquid echinacea. No, no, it's 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 capsules with powder. Yeah, capsule. Gel, gel caps with powder. Anyway, let's kick off some tunes here, and we'll come back and talk about this, that, and the other thing. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy, people. Yeah, we'll be we'll be back after these. Yeah, definitely enjoy. We're gonna kick it off with a little bit of a mail to me. Oh, I, I I missed the end there. <laughs> I was I was laughing at Mick. Yeah, you you don't want my trousers to fall down now, do you? <laughs> it's uh, the Rolling Stones for uh, Miss a Moose Girl there, Honky Tonk Women, live uh, from Madison Square Garden back in 1969. Before that, we had uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan with Jeff Beck doing I'm Down, and we kicked it off with Emil DeMay and Road Runner. 
<laughs> nice. Yeah. So uh, I I anyway, uh, here in the chat, uh, Anti mentioned, and so it's a good a good time to talk about that. Uh, and Anti Hen uh, mentioned that although I had lost six grand uh, on uh, the Bitcoin, uh, I could now say it was less than uh, three three grand. Uh, always look at the bright side of life. Whistle whistle. However, <laughs> this has been a um, a tough week for the Bitcoiners. Uh, and uh, Bitcoin lost was it yesterday or the day before uh, over a hundred billion dollars in um, value if you base it in USD value, uh, US dollar value. It, so um, uh, my my personal um, I hate to call them losses because they're not really losses because uh, one dog equals one dog. Uh, that don't change. One Bitcoin still equals one Bitcoin. Uh, but if you're gonna if you if you're gonna value uh, something in dollars, my uh, personal balance sheet of crypto coinage that I own went from about two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to about eighty thousand dollars. Jeez. <laughs> so so it's a it's a little it's a little more. It's a little more than uh, six grand there, but of course that initial six grand that I lost in the Bitcoin was because of my own stupidity, my own ignorance. This uh, was not. This this uh, had to do with um, who knows what, something in the markets. But we knew things were going to get fucked up uh, once the CME uh, put 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 them on futures uh, f futures contracts on 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 the Bitcoin. Uh, that, that was that was. I was predetermined, bound and determined. Um, uh, re regardless of all that, uh, Bitcoin going from where it was up around uh, $15 uh, down to where it is, uh, I mean $15,000 down to where it is now, around the $8,000 mark, um, that hurts. Uh, uh, in, in, the, in the U.S. dollar way of looking at things. But, of course, as I said, one Bitcoin is still worth one Bitcoin. That didn't change. That's never going to change. <laughs> right. So, so, uh, but but the problem is everything. Uh, the way it's looked at is how many dollars are 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 these non-centralized currencies worth? Um, right. <laughs> yeah, it is painful. It is. It is. It is painful because. But I hadn't. You know, I wasn't going to cash anything in for a while. And so who knows by the time March rolls around um what what it's going to be um you know it, it because that's that's probably when I'll be needing some 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 dollars uh, that I could uh, trade them in for so who knows uh, at that point in time um where where things are going to wind up at I don't know um and no nobody else does either so uh, we'll, we'll see. It could be down to back down to a thousand dollars where it started off last year, or it could be up to twenty five thousand dollars where I predicted it's going to go this year. We we don't know that information. Um, yeah, uh, you, you know the thing is, at the beginning of last year, I I wasn't even looking at my stuff. I just had a bunch of uh, files on my computer that were just files. They weren't nothing worth nothing. So. Uh, regardless of all that, looking at even with the with the with the money that I that I basically threw away by being an idiot, and mm. and um, the, what I what I have in present dollar based vit, Bitcoin value, um, <laughs> I'm still way up. <laughs> so um, yeah, and I have uh, basically ten 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 Bitcoins worth of value in other cryptocurrencies <laughs> exactly Grammy the cyber currency is valued at less fiat currency so it's uh, air for air however, however you want to do it however you want to look at it but uh, it just comes down to the, the old the old same old thing well how much is a dog coin worth one dog is worth one dog <laughs> I know it's dogecoin uh, whatever uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're still ahead of me, 
uh, there. Uh, you're still ahead of me there, uh, Romes. Uh, no doubt about that. But uh, you, you spend a lot more time and work on, on that stuff than I do. Uh, my, 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 my main work was uh, uh, finding all my old wallets that I hadn't used for like three, four years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there's money. There's money there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Anyway, Cowboy Tech posted up this uh, link here uh, from Malware Bytes Labs, which apparently, if anybody out there using a Mac, I, I know there's a couple. Um, I, I think Frumpy and Gooberzilla use Macs. I don't know. I don't. I don't use Macs. Uh, anyway, uh, apparently, a new Mac crypto miner distributed via a Mac update hack. So this was from today, early this morning. Security researcher of Sentinel-1 tweeted about a new Mac malware being distributed very ma via a Mac update. The malware, which a body, I guess that's the guy's name, uh, has named OSX.CreativeUpdate is a new cryptocurrency miner designed to sit in the background on your computer's CPU uh, to mine the Monero currency. So uh, if you've got a Mac, uh, make sure you go to the Malwarebytes site and... Um, Get your get your shit fixed. <laughs> well, that, I missed it now. So there's something else I gotta do now. This no, no, no not, not you, not you, not you. Oh, Mac. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. You're good to go. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. 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 There was a, there was a different problem with malware bytes last week. This is not a malware bytes. Right. Problem. Okay. Uh, this is a problem malware bytes is telling you about. But there was a problem with malware bytes last week. Uh, where they put it, pushed out an update to the Malwarebytes software that um, basically screwed your computer over. It, 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 it ate all of your RAM. And because and, I'm suddenly looking at, at mine la there last weekend, well, first first thing, Barman went offline, and then I, and, and I couldn't get his thing going. I go out and look at his computer, and it says low on memory. I've never had that happen on that computer. And uh, and I look at the bring up the uh, task manager and I see all of the memory that he's got was being sucked up by malware bytes and so it took a while but I finally killed that off uh, and, and then uh, wow. by the time I got back in here this computer was doing it uh, oh my god yeah. that's crazy <laughs> yeah because <laughs> I, got, I got 24 gigs of RAM on here <laughs> so and it was taking 22 of them uh, for the malware bytes. Um, plus, it was also filling up the page file. Um, <laughs> so it was nuts. <laughs> anyway, I don't even know if anything happened to my computer. Well, you, you know, and, and it may not. I have. logged on. I, called. I, I, I think I, I think I got to you, you quick enough that it that it didn't cause the problem. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and anyway, but they, then they put out the fix, and the fix is good, and it works fine, and everything's good to go now. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's that so, for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually bookmark things this time. Sweet. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the first one I'm going to start with like a mild to difficult. I'm going to go like the best scenario to the worst scenario. With these stories. All right. So anyway, this is about glitter. Okay. My personal story about glitter recently is I bought this really cool looking shirt, Packers shirt, Green Bay Packers shirt, right? All right. Well, on the front of it, there was some glitter on the, the lettering or something. Yeah. So anyway, I noticed that it, like the glitter wasn't stain on the shirt. And, like, I washed it, like, with the normal laundry, and I noticed that, like, some of my clothes, I was getting, I was all itchy, right? <laughs> well, that's because I washed this glitter shirt with other clothes. Okay. And the glitter comes off in the laundry, right? Well, I've come to find out, and I never really thought about this for a while. You know, it didn't really dawn on me, because I'm not really a glitter fan, you know? I just thought the shirt looked cool, and now I think twice about buying that shirt, right? They shouldn't even put this shit on clothing, right? Right. Glitter should only be used for, like, strippers. Well, it shouldn't be used at all, in my opinion. But anyway, <laughs> it shouldn't even be produced. All right. But it is, and what it is is 
Okay, so I found this article on Daily Mail about glitter. Um, let me get the link here. Anyway, um, so it took a while. I, I stopped washing that shirt with other shirts, and I even don't wear it that much because it's like, you know what? This shirt is bullshit. <laughs> it's got those fucking glitter on it. So anyway, this article here, have you ever noticed that, have you noticed that everything's getting a bit sparkly glitter? A long staple of children's arts and crafts is now a trend for adults. You can scatter it in your hair or even wear it in a face mask, which I don't get that one. Wear it in a face mask. I don't know if that means, like, a skin product. I have no idea. But anyway, it might not be the most sophisticated craze, but what's wrong with a bit of harmless fun, you might think? Well, experts say, glitter is far from harmless. It may be polluting the environment, harming our eyes and skin, and causing problems around the world. All that frivolous glitter could be doing serious damage. Okay, it's made out of plastic, for one thing. Okay. And it's the little flex, like they grind it up, and it's so tiny. You know what I mean? It, typically, it, or it's made of tiny pieces of plastic, making it as bad for the environment as the toxic microbeads that have been banned from our com from cosmetics. Okay, but I, I think, you know, it's, um, it's probably not widely enough used to be any serious environmental threat uh, other than to the person that's applying it to themselves. Right, but it is it, it. We have too much fucking plastic pollution in this in this world. This it, it can't be recycled. Not no plastic can be. It doesn't biodegrade. It's an air. Not saying it's an airborne airborne menace. Menace. <laughs> um, we don't know the health impact, so it's important we put enough effort in finding out the risk. Food isn't the only way glitter can get in your system. Um. They could deliver chemicals to the lower parts of our lungs and maybe into our bloodstream. It's because they're so tiny. He said this could be just as damaging as inhaling car food, he warns. And when it comes to glitter, children and young people are most likely to be affected. Well, it can add sparkle to your skin. It really shouldn't get anywhere near your eyes. Those tiny flecks have incredibly sharp edges. Cosmetic-grade glitter should have rounded edges. Um, craft glitter is a different story. Um, the British Medical Journal has urged doctors to look out for pain, patients complaining of swollen eyes and vision loss after a 49-year-old woman was almost blinded by glitter. She went to a hospital after glitter rubbed off of a Christmas card into her eye and had formed a clump causing a lesion. I mean, I guess there's things out there that you can use in place of it. Um, there's a fashion giant Asol, or whoever that is, sells glitter made from eucalyptus trees. Um, I just, it, like I said, it's nothing I really thought about until I had this shirt that would, it was on my other clothes, and I was getting all itchy yeah. from it. Yeah. And that glitter that's on that shirt, that's not like craft glitter, that's really small. And it's like, oh my God, you know, because that it, you, you could easily get into your lungs. Okay, but but I mean, but I'm not saying this is the worst thing in the fucking but world. T t tell me, I, I picked this story for something to fucking talk about. All right, on the no, show. no, 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 no. Tell, tell, tell me so, this. Tell me this. There you go. Tell, tell tell me this. Why why do women choose to put glitter on themselves or their clothing or whatever? I don't. Except for this one shirt that okay. I bought, like, but, but in, which I in, normally, in, you know, in, I just thought it was cool, whatever, you know. I didn't think about the glitter aspect until but, after I but, got it home, wore it, washed it. But but your you but your, but your typical woman that does use that kind of product, why do they do it? It's to attract attention and look pretty or something. Right. Because, I don't because know. Be, I, I'm not be, be, into it. It's because men like shiny things. <laughs> Right, um, it's glitter. a psychological thing. And glitter is shiny. Absolutely. Oh, and gl glitter is shiny. Anyway, so uh, here's this thing, uh, since you talked about it, the fact that it's made from plastic and plastic doesn't break down, da-da-da-da. 
Here we go from the WorldEconomicForum.org, <laughs> which is probably not the site you really want to go to, uh, uh, but th they're talking about this. Scientists have made biodegradable plastic from sugar and carbon dioxide, and it talks about the fact that uh, by 2050, there could be more plastic than fish in the ocean. Uh, more than 80% of tap water may contain microplastics. Da, 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 da. So they have come up with this um, biodegradable plastic, which is made from uh, sugar and carbon dioxide. So um, there, there are other ways of doing it out there. I don't know how effective they are, um, or uh, if the um, how long you know how long they last or anything like that. But apparently they've done that. Uh, again, this is from the World Economic Forum here, which is not a place that I trust. Um, no, no. <laughs> but 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 there's other, there's plenty of other articles out there. I just I, I, that's just the first one that I pulled up there. No, I, and there there are there it is out there. The technology is out there. It's just it's going to take you know change and companies out there that are making plastic products. They don't want to stop making it. They don't want to change the way they fucking do things. They've been making money all along. Why would they want to fucking change anything? You know, this is the mentality that pisses me off because it's like, oh, well, we're just going to fucking do whatever. We don't care. We don't care it's bad for the environment. We don't care there's other technology out there that we could make biodegradable, you know, plastic silverware, quote, unquote, non-plastic silverware, but it's biodegradable. That's the biggest thing. People don't think about the long-term effects of anything. It seems like it's like everyone's just in the here and now, and just it's no one fucking questions anything. You're fucking no one thinks long term. You know, well people don't want to be educated. That we've been addicted to plastic for how long? You know, yeah, that's the thing. It is brainwashing. It's right there. You know, I, when I go to other places to visit, like when I was in Puerto Rico. I spent literally an hour walking on the beach picking up plastic glasses that people had alcoholic drinks in because they were too fucking lazy to throw them out in a garbage can or something, which isn't the answer because that just ends up going to a landfill, right? Right. So there is really no solution. I mean, it is, it's, it's education and people want giving a fuck. That's what it's down to. Is people have to want to give a fuck about something other than fucking football or fucking Whatever other distraction you have that in the long term doesn't mean fucking shit. Right. You know, it doesn't mean fucking shit. They care about, oh, what, you know, they got children. They, they care about how much money they're going to have and how much shit they can buy their kid. They don't care about what kind of world they're going to fucking leave for their fucking kid or maybe their kids' kids. No, they don't think long term. Why would you do that? You know, and we, the, the, tech, the, the thing is, is the knowledge and the technology is out there. Everyone fucking knows plastic is not biodegradable. Everyone fucking knows that. Right. So why are we so addicted to it? Why do we, you know, it, it is an individual thing. People have to change their behavior. You know, you have to change your behavior. Like when I get plastic silverware, if I get takeout for lunch or something, they give me a fork and I don't use it, I throw it in a drawer in my desk. It's like I can't bring myself to throw it away because I didn't use it. It's plastic, still good. You know what I mean? Sure. It's just it's it it does degrade eventually, as I hand, but it it's like two hundred years. It, it's it's, it's 200, unrealistic. Two hundred thousand years. It basically doesn't doesn't biodegrade fast enough. That's the problem with it. Yeah, it takes hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years for that stuff to degrade. To break down, and yeah. it doesn't, and it's not good once it does break down, even. You know, to me, plastic is awesome for many, many things, all right? Don't get me wrong, but it's been overused. Yeah, just just look around your desk. Everything's plastic. Everything. Everything's freaking plastic. <laughs> yeah. Look at your side of your car. Yeah, look at well, the dashboard of your fucking vehicle. Look at the buttons, everything. I used to work at a plastic manufacturer that made those buttons. You know, the thing that you turn your radio on, the thing you turn your heat on. I, I worked at a place that made that stuff. Yeah, I mean it's it's over you. That's plastic's been a really good product for many things, but it's not good for everything. I mean, we're just so people as a whole. We're just so I don't know how to explain it. 
it, it's human nature, maybe, or just like you said, you know, people say it's the brainwashing. Yeah, I know I've been brainwashed. That's what I. That's why I'm fucking combating it. That's why I am the way I am, and that's part of it. You know, because well, I, well, I, I refuse well, to well, fucking continue to be brainwashed. Fuck that. So let me let me tell you one thing, and I, and I don't even know if they still make them or not. But uh, at one point in time, back in the '90s, I think it was, um, they were selling these um, biodegradable plastic um, trash bags for, for like for like a kitchen trash can. Right, right. Those things were horrible, horrible, because they would break yeah. more often than not. Well, yeah, <laughs> and that doesn't didn't do any good either because. <laughs> Now we, I use like the the biodegradable bags for my organic waste, which I I went with my friend's garbage company, where I'm not throwing my potato peels or my eggshells or my leftover mashed potatoes or, or my co coffee filters and my old coffee grinds. I'm not just throwing them in the garbage anymore. I'm throwing them in the compost. Yeah. And I'm also doing more recycling than ever before too, which saves on the amount of garbage that is going in the landfill. And it's, yes, I'm just one person. This is just one household here that's doing their, trying to do their share, fair share, like with the recycling thing, right? Right. But, um, and it does make me feel a little bit better, you know, um, but at the same time, you know, I'm just one family. I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of compost that goes out of here in a month. I fill up that it's like a gallon bag or whatever. Yeah. You know, just like a Walmart size plastic bag, right? But it's, yeah. it's green. It's biodegradable. And we fill that thing up. I, I probably take that thing out, fill it up twice a week or twice a month, I mean. Yeah. You know, and then they take it to their their compost site and they throw it in their compost pile. And, um, you know, when it's like 20 below here, sometimes that's my friend. He'll post the thermometer. He'll take a picture of the thermometer in the compost pile. Right. It's like 100 or something. You know what I mean? Sure. It's really cool, actually. Well, you know what I mean? A lot of chemical reactions going on in there. No, I do not have a garden. I've tried to do a garden. I've been wanting to do a garden for a long time, but it's just never never happened yet. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. So this, this glitter thing, it, it, it's, it sounds frivolous, but it, 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 to me, it, it, we don't need it. No, you know, nobody uh, needs it, glitter. It's not a necessary <laughs> product. It's a, a, on the planet. A, I mean, it, nobody, it's not. No, nobody's going to die without glitter. Right. <laughs> it's just like, I just, you know, I get that it, it looks cool in arts and crafts and blah, 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 but we have to think long term here, people. You know, but, you can't just think in the now all the time. The th thing is, in order to get rid of all the glitter, you'd have to kill all the unicorns. Right. Because they fart glitter. Right. Yeah. So. Blame the unicorns. No, I'm talking about <laughs> the, the man-made glitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, boy. um... It's just little shit like that just irks me, but that isn't the only thing that got me fucking going this week. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm going to go, since we're on this subject about birth annihilation, let's look at this one. What you, would you call it? The Earth's Annihilation. Earth's Annihilation. Yeah. Due to humans, by the way. But but on that note, the, the Earth can... can uh, heal itself, okay? It, it, when the humans are gone, the earth will still be here and heal itself. Heal itself. Sure. So anyway, um, this, I guess I kind of knew about this, but I wasn't totally enlightened. Um, I knew that the, the government, the U.S. government had tested H-bombs and all other kinds of bombs, you know, in the, in the Pacific Islands. Right. And in Nevada. Sure, and, and New Mexico. Yes. These a-holes were doing... Okay, before the 1970s, the United States and other nuclear-armed countries conducted more than 500 atomic weapons tests in the atmosphere. During these tests, radioactive debris and gases were flown up in the atmosphere and traveled around the world. No shit. 
Um, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has stated that people around the world have had exposure to radioactive, radioactive fallout from these nuclear tests. No shit, Sherlock. Even today, radioactive fallout <laughs> is present in many parts of the world, but in small amounts. They just say that to make you feel better. By the way. I mean, this is the CDC, all right? Right. They're going to say, they're not going to tell you the fucking truth. Anyway, um, in the early 2000s, the CDC released the Global Radioactive, Radioactive Fallout Report and found any person living in the U.S. since 1951 has been exposed, quote, exposed to some radioactive fallout and all of a person's organs and tissues have received some exposure, end quote. Okay, no kidding. I knew that. So anyway, um, the cost associated with nuclear tests for any country have been quite devastating for surrounding communities. Take, for instance, the Anahuitoc Atoll, a large cor coral atoll of 40 islands in the Pacific Ocean, where the U.S. government detonated 30 megatons, 30 megatons of weapons equivalent to 2,000 Hiroshima blasts between 1948 and 1958. That's 10 years' worth. In total, 67 nuclear bombs detonated on Inwatak Atoll, the Bikini Atoll, of the Marshall Islands of the Pacific Ocean. Well, beginning in 1977, more than 8,000 people, and they, when they say people, they mean soldiers in the U.S. military, all right, worked to clean up the Marshall Islands shifting 110,000 cubic yards of contaminated soil and debris into a blast crater. Okay, see, their bright idea was to use one of the holes left by one of their tests to fill it up with nuclear waste and cover it up with cement. All right? Yeah. But it's permeable. The bottom of this thing, they didn't line it with anything. It's been leaking into the ocean since it's been there. Right. Their fear now is a typhoon is going to wipe this fucking thing out because these islands are very low sea level. They're very low. And they're saying the next, I mean, people can't live on Bikini Atoll anymore. When they did a test in near Bikini, or on in near Bikini Atoll mm -hmm. the first time, little kids that live there, it's the Pacific Islands, the Pacific Islands, they've never seen snow. So when the nuclear fault, they, they they misjudged the wind that day. So the nuclear fallout went on these people that lived on this island. And the little kids were out there playing in it like they thought it because it was, looked like snow. Right? Right, right. So anyway, it's uninhabitable yeah. now. Yeah. And the people, the, the soldiers that worked on that thing and built that thing for the army, mm -hmm. the government. Right. Many of them have perished due to cancer and other ailments, bad ailments, and, you know, kidney issues, liver issues, cancer, you name it. They didn't tell these guys what they were going to be doing until they got there. They said, oh, yeah, it's going to be a great, great uh, deployment. You're going to a Pacific a paradise. They didn't tell them what they were going to be doing. Until they fucking, and then, they, you know, there was no hazmat suits, no protection of, of any kind. They were not given any per personal protective equipment at all. Right. I mean, this is bad. This is not a good thing. I mean, um, I watched this video that's on here, and it was a really good uh, informative video. It's at the bottom of that link that I pulled it. Yeah. But this is this is bad, and these people are screwed on the, on um, Antioch Atoll. A lot of them have left because they just they know it's bad, you know. Sure. I mean, so if you guys didn't know anything about that, there you go. You might want to know. I mean, nothing I can, what can you do? What are they going to do about it? They made no, they, they just basically dumped that shit in there, covered it up, and left. You know, there's no, I've never heard any, 
plans, trying to get it cleaned up. I mean, what can they do? How can they clean it up? The problem with nuclear waste is there no, there's nowhere to put it that's safe. No. There's, and then, like, the, the, the out on the West Coast, in Oregon, in Washington, um, there's nuclear waste out there, and the, the containers that they have stored the nuclear waste in are rusting and leaking right into the fucking water, sure. right into the rivers, the Oregon River, whatever the river is out there. Columbia. The probably. one that goes right into the ocean, in, like Hood, Oregon. Yeah. I mean, you, what can you do? They thought about, like, the one suggestion was, instead of, you know, letting a typhoon take it out and spread all this terrible radi radioactive materials, they could just bomb, bomb it, take it out. I don't know how that would work, though. Is that the answer? Yeah, I don't think so. That, that makes no sense at all. Bomb it. No, that doesn't make any sense. No, that, I would, mean, that would just spread what, it out. What are they going to do? Right. You know, we're fucked. The world is fucked because of this thing. All they can do is, it's like, shoot. It's not just the United States. The whole world is fucked <laughs> because of this fucking thing. They could shoot it into space. Yeah. You can't dig it up, though. I mean, they could, but... I mean, the, the the one GI they interviewed that was still alive that had been there in the 19, 1970s, late 1970s, when they did this, um, they started do, covering it up in 1977, which they ended doing the, the testing in 58, but they didn't start taking care of the waste until 77. So <laughs> what does that fucking tell you? Anyway, um, I don't mean to laugh. I'm not laughing sarcastically. But um, some of the plutonium broke. It, the one test that they did, it didn't work right. Right. So it didn't break up the material all the way. So they had these guys rolling around the island, picking this stuff up with their bare fucking hands. They were picking up plutonium with their bare fucking hands, chunks of it. And this is the most deadly substance on Earth, is plutonium. Yeah. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, if only we were. And uh, The one guy goes, we were lied to. He goes, they told us we were going to do a mission in the South Pacific. It was going to be awesome because it was paradise, and it was far from that, based on what we had to do. Yeah, we're going to send you on this. Uh, mission to a beautiful paradise and you're going to destroy it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it already was destroyed by the time they got uh, I know, but I'm just saying. It was already destroyed, but no, you're going to destroy yourselves. You're going to kill yourselves by doing this mission for us. Yeah. All right, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's slip into some tunes here. And, uh... Okay. And uh, we'll come back and talk more about this or something else or whatever. All right. So, where's my, where's my... There's Enjoy, everyone. It's Freaky Friday. Yes, it is. It's... Supermoon. Or is that coming up? Right. Is that already full, full, no, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the full moon uh, during the next break, or during the next, okay. during the next talk session. Uh, it's all about lies, that I had. The Spencer Davis Group. <laughs> his name yet? It's not quite the end of the night, but I think you probably know his name. That was Gary Clark Jr. Uh, with Bright Lights, a Big City for the Money Moose Girl there. Before that was Queen at doing Bohemian Rhapsody for Mr. Vin E. And uh, we kicked it off there with the Spencer Davis Group back from 1965 and Keep On Running. So, good tunes. Border to border, wall to wall. None of that, none of that border wall stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, you know it, it's so ridiculous. It's like, oh my fucking god! And then that fucking guy, he just—he seemed like he was drunk. All right, I saw part of the fucking State of the Union, and it—it's just—it's just so. Ew! It's just ew! I just ew. 
how I can say it. Yeah. Um. Well, that that was yeah. the, that was the, the the big news today was the uh, some stupid memo they released. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. So they they that that's the guy that's got all the uh, the Hansels oozing with joy and all the uh, uh, Chloe's just flusterpated over it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to me, it's like, meh, <laughs> gives a frick. <laughs> how, how does any of that shit matter? <laughs> I mean, all the so the, so the, the the memo basically said, yeah, the FBI is corrupt. Yeah, Hillary, it is. Hillary, it has been. What's H the, what, is that Hillary, news? Hillary, Hillary's corrupt. Yeah, 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 shit yeah, corrupt. yeah, okay. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> hey, tell me something I don't fucking know. Come on, baby. <laughs> Yeah, it was just like, but but it was a big thing. Yeah, excited. Oh, they're all excited up about it. Oh, this is yeah. a great thing, or this is a terrible thing. And it's just like it's not even a thing. I, I, I don't. You know, no kidding, Anthony. That's 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 the key right there. Yeah, government's the government 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 government's corrupt. That that's that's Period. all. That's what it comes down to. Uh, they they're yep. a bunch of corrupt I mean, ass bastards. Anyone can believe them if they want, but you're you're really being dumb. To believe liars, yeah. liars. It's all lies. Uh, you it's can't like, believe a freaking thing. And none of this shit, none of this shit matters to any to to me. But here's something I, I found, and, and I, I, don't, I don't even know what to think of it, what to make of it. Um, but I came across it uh, this afternoon or this evening. I don't know. It was on Twitter. And I, and I'm I'm just gonna give you. A, well, maybe I'll show show some pictures here on the screen. Um, of it for you because it's it's really it's it's I never heard of it. Um, Sweet Jesus ice cream, I guess it's called. What? This sounds not good. No, no, I, I, I it, it's not good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like it is. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me see if I can put this on on on, on the uh, and uh, you know it's probably a bunch of like um, Bible thumpers that put this. Uh, Article up. I, I don't know who this vigilant citizen is, uh, but um, let, let me let me try and get let me try and let me try and get some of this uh, screen capped here. Um, let me scroll down a bit on this here. Okay. Um, so so what they're saying here it says, uh, "Sweet Jesus, the disturbing disturbing marketing of a trendy ice cream franchise." That's disgusting. That's child pornography. Well, that, that's what you would think, right? I mean, you got some little boy with like a black eye, and he's smoking a pipe, and he's drinking coffee, and and, and he gets he's got a, a monkey on his back. He's got a monkey on his back, right? Which is probably like heroin or something. I don't know. Anyway, so sweet, and the T is an upside down crucifix. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Then they they got more here, uh, like with the with the, the whole cross thing going on. Sweet what Jesus, the fuck? sweet Jesus, and then um, I I don't I I don't this know. This is what? I'm, okay, this is gonna lead into my next story, but go okay. ahead, keep going. Okay, um, let me go down to some of these other ones. It says everyone has a cross to bear. Yours won't be hunger. Um, sweet. This is a marketing campaign, but it's a very poorly. Okay. Done. Eat. It says eat like it's your last supper. I get it. Sweet I Jesus. get it. But they, they, okay, look at this this uh, this disturbing photograph here. It says, "Let sweet Jesus into your mouth." Oh my God! <laughs> and it's got it's all. Such poor taste. It's advertising in poor taste, obviously to get your attention and to rile certain folks up. <laughs> well, right. Uh, so, okay, love is patient, love is kind, but you can't lick it. And then, and they, and they, and they, and they, and they, and they, and they show like the, you know, there's some hand reaching up to. I, I guess and that's then, supposed to be a, 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 what do you call it, popsicle stick, but it looks like the guy's yep, holding yep. a dick or something. And he, and he got this flying, yep. flying tongue over here. Wow. Um, and, wow. <laughs> and then there's this one. This is a great one. It says, "Thou shalt not take." The Lord's name in vain, but God damn, that's delicious. <laughs> so, oh, wait, let me see. Where's, where's the one of that girl? Oh, here it is. They, they got this like John Bonnet Ramsey looking girl with like, um, I, I guess that's supposed to be like ice cream stuff, but it's like blood around her mouth or something like that. She's got little Playboy bunny ears going on. Um, 
And it's definitely like leading into, you know, pedophilia type stuff. Um. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> that's, that's bad. That's bad yeah. taste. That's fucked up. I don't like this shit. So, I, I'm going to say it right now. I do not like the adultification or the fucking sexualization of children. I think that's fucking totally fucking stupid. Asinine. It should not happen. And then, and then but it is. It is happening. And just, just watch a fucking... Taylor Swift video or a Lady Gaga video and tell me that it's not Illuminati shit because that's exactly what this fucking shit. Is. Right. So I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what to make. It's the sexualization of children and it's fucking sick and wrong. So let's just get get real and call it for what it fucking is. I don't give a fuck who it is <laughs> putting it out there. I don't give a fuck how much money they make. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I anyway, like, so... Pedophilia, yeah. period. It's pedophilia, period. And that shit that happened in the fucking USA Gymnastics program, now they're saying that the United States, or the, the what's the, the commission, the, the, who heads the Olympics? The Olympic Committee. Yeah. They US freaking, OC. they knew this shit was going on. And they didn't do enough. They They knew. Of course. And now they're being called into question, too, which they should be. This needs to be called out. This can't be going on. All this behind closed doors shit and all this, well, we got money so we can get out of it and blah, blah, blah. And we're going to cover it up. We're going to fuck. You know what? It needs to be exposed more so than it has been. And this is ridiculous. Yeah, I did, Andrew Hand. That was good. You know what? I wish he would have got to that fucker. Just, I wish they would have given a minute, given him the minute or the five minutes that he wanted with that dude. I just, just even thirty seconds, punch that fucker right in the fucking face. You know what I mean? Right. Oh yeah. That little piece of fucking shit doctor that did all this shit. I don't know how this happened. I really don't. I don't know what to tell you. I never really thought highly about the Olympics before, but now I really don't think highly of them at all. No. These, what they do to these little... They get these kids when they're fucking pre-teens. You know what I mean? Right. And these these kids, the parents just hand these kids over to them. You know? Because their they're parents... Oh, the Olympics, the Olympics. I want my kid to be in the Olympics. It's like, really? You know? Exactly. But yeah, anyway, they... this... this Oh, no, yeah, yeah, they, they just, you know, the, 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 like you said, the parents don't care. They're yeah, they 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 their goal is is to have, you know, a famous a, a little kid. champion as a kid. Oh, that's true. As, as Rome says, the Olympics have been sexualizing children since they started. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. But and, so is Hollywood. Oh, absolutely. Hollywood has. I mean, I mean since, it's, since its inception, Hollywood's been doing the same fucking thing. Yeah, the ice skaters or, or the uh, gymnasts. Right. Ice or the... skaters, the gymnasts. You know it. Yep. Those gymnast costumes that they wear when they're doing their floor routine or whatever, there's nothing in the imagination that. No. So, right. Well, so, anyway, this really pissed me off. Uh. And this guy must have had a good lawyer. This is along these lines of this sexualization of children. And that this fucking, it, it causes so many problems. Right. So this guy, this motherfucker, Chippewa Falls man, accused of sexually assaulting a girl, will spend three years on probation. This is a slap on the wrist, people. Uh, Judge Steve Cray made the ruling this week in the case of Stephen Burrich. He was charged last fall of having sex with a girl starting when she was 10 and didn't continue until she was 13. He, he fucking sexually assaulted this girl when, from when she was age 10 to age 13. He was 19 at the time. And he gets probation. Three years probation. This is fucked up. This is a, sex, a slap on the wrist. This guy had a good lawyer, I guarantee you. Because there's no that, that's wrong. Either, either that, either that, or the or the judge is a pedo too. So, right, you don't know. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. Really, that girl's fucked up now. Oh yeah. 
I mean, she's fucked up from this. It, 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 that's what happens to these people. Right. You know, <sighs> uh, I know, I know. Frustrating. I know. I mean... Oh, my God. Yeah. But it, it's just the, the same with the uh, gymnastics. This is a huge fallout. This could be the end of the fucking Olympics. I mean, the way they, the way it has been run up until this point, this could be the fucking end. This is a huge fucking scandal. This has far-reaching fucking tremors. Right. I mean... This is just the tip of the fucking iceberg, really. And this, with this Hollywood thing and all this, all the, I mean, okay, Graham, I mean, I get it. You know, everyone has sexual urges and stuff, you know? But what, I've never, I mean, I guess I've never, to a point I've experienced a little bit of sexual harassment, you know, once in a while, catcalling or whatever. But I've never been, like, in a job interview or anything where the fucking guy interviewed me once he whips out his dick and starts masturbating. I mean, what the <laughs> fuck is that? Who fucking does that? I don't know. I mean, this, isn't, this is Hollywood, people. This isn't what now, normal now, people now, do. Um, yeah, you, this, yeah. this is what? Yeah, you know, you know uh, uh, Rose McGowan, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she she's, like, one of the first ones to say Harvey Weinstein was... Was was doing all this bad crap. Okay, well, she I, was raped by him, Grim. I, well, I know, I know, but but there was there was a story that came out. And I didn't keep a link to it or nothing, but there was a story by her that came out, and she was like fifteen, and and some older guy. She didn't mention. There was no name mentioned, but uh, right. But apparently, it was, her, it was him. No, 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 oh, no, 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 not him. It was another guy. Yeah. Another guy. You're right, I hear you. So yep, his, name, you're right. his name she hasn't mentioned, that, but she said everybody would know this name. Um, and um, the thing is, um, it it's it's like she did it willingly. She wasn't wasn't no. She she was fifteen. She said she was attracted to him. No, my but but, my but then she said now that. all all these years later now she she looked back on it. And she said, wait a minute. I was only fifteen at the time. That guy couldn't have been. I mean that 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 was that was not right for this for this person to do to me. Um, even one even, thing that happened. Even if I wanted that, it. Uh, <laughs> Let me find out like here. She fucking her mom was a fucking psycho. And when she was fifteen, yeah. she was living with a twenty-year-old guy. Yeah. So, so I mean, there, there's the article. It's on, it's on, uh, a long time. But I don't think that she didn't get raped by these people. I think she was raped by these people. I don't doubt it for a second. Anyway, there's the article on Zero Hedge. You can read it for yourself. Um, it's it's, well, it's, 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 it's kind was of a it's, by Kirk Douglas, it's, it's was just kidding. kind of it's just kind of a bizarre so, story. Whatever. Um, it, it says. Uh, the, the, the the man picked me up when I was 15 years old. She said he took me home, and, and after he met me, and he showed me a soft porn movie he had made for Showtime. So he's obviously a producer or director, under right. a, under a different name. And then he had sex with me. And then he had sex with me. She said. Uh, she said her her left. Had he left her standing on the street corner, in her mind playing it back, she had been attracted to him. So it, it always uh, filed it away as a sexual experience. She then said to Pharaoh, I, I, I don't have a normal trajectory. I don't know if you do either. The son of Woody Allen uh, related to her saying, I do not. Anyway, then uh, McGowan said, until she started processing what had happened last fall, she always saw the situation as that creep did this to a 15-year-old, uh, adding that it was not until two weeks after your story broke, uh, our story, the world story, uh, that I was in in bed and started saying, oh, my God, I think that's molestation. So, so I, I understand uh, that it probably was uh, molestation. I don't know how, what year that would have been, but um, so, some stuff has changed over the years since... And she's she's probably what thirty five forty now. Yep. Yeah. So um, you figure twenty five years ago, um, 
there was it was probably more acceptable back then. Well, what to, are you doing, Hollywood, Graham? What do you expect? To have, you they know, are. They're fucking just icky. They're just nasty fucking people. They, and when you put a fucking teenage girl in that environment, that's how it goes down. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. I'm not saying she makes it up. I believe the Harvey Weinstein story from her. And I, because how are the, many other people have come out and said this? Because if people like that, they'll just do it to one person. They, yeah. They're they predators. They're just like this fucking doctor. The gymnastics. They're predators. Period. And, you know, and how, how easy would it be a 30-year-old guy or a 20-year-old guy to fucking seduce a 15-year-old girl? Pretty Come easy. On. Yeah. Pretty easy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So people can fucking sit there and say, oh, no, she's making it up, blah, blah, blah. She's not. Because look how many other people have come out since then. You know? Right. It's just, yeah. I know, I know. It's disgusting. The sexualization of children, it's just wrong. I, I don't, I don't, no, no. And, you know, I, when I was, when my kids were little, you know, I was a, but now, you know, the way I am now, and I just tried to freak it. I don't know. I, I, cor I just, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know what I did. But <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but it, but I, 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 I do recall hearing stories of times not that long ago in the history of the United States that if a girl was 16 and wasn't already married, meaning that it happened much younger than 16, then, then she was kind of considered an old maid at that point. Right, but that's when people didn't live as long. <laughs> well, no, in the history of this country, you're only talking about a couple 300 years. I agree with, I know, but a lot of that stuff was arranged. Some of them girls were fucking miserable, dude. Well, they I'm were sure they were miserable. With these old fucking teasers, and they're 15. Are you fucking kidding me? It's fucking disgusting. But no, no, right, but I it's mean. Like, it's disgusting. It, there's, I'm sure there's still a lot of people that hang on to those old ideas um, in, in that, that, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, back in the day, yeah, People didn't go to school past 16. You know, not everybody, the college, people worked on their farms and their, they didn't, it was a whole different deal. Right. A whole different way of life. It was all different. It wasn't like it is now. It's totally fucking opposite of it now. And right. we're, we're hurting, you know. We don't have enough farms anymore. We don't have people that are willing to be farms. Farmers. We don't have enough people that are willing to be plumbers and electricians, carpenters. Exactly. Because that that's and I saw an article the other day. The biggest lack of uh, people going to school is for trade the trades. Yeah. No, I I get it. I, I they're trying to pass a uh, a, a law here in uh, New Mexico that would require all high school students as part of their graduation requirements to either and primarily apply for college or if they don't want to do that then they could join the military what <laughs> that's that's what that's that's what they're trying to say. As part of your graduation requirement, you have to either apply for college or join the military. Um, and, yeah, and, you know. And, and I'm I was sorry, like, but... I was like, well, well, who's going to work at Walmart? <laughs> like... See, that's the problem with the workforce today is that the jobs they need, like Walmart readers and people that work at fucking McDonald's and shit, Donalds, right. they fucking. You can't make a living working there as an adult. No. You can't. You don't make enough money working there as an adult. So no. the problem is that's why they can't find fill enough of these jobs because you you can't you don't make enough money working them jobs. No exactly. one wants to work those fucking jobs. Yeah. They're shit jobs. No doubt about I mean, it. But trust no one said something. A lot of those girls were abused with their parents in the room. 
That's right. That doctor, he turned his back. You know what? If I notice my doctor doing that, I get up, I sit, walk around the other side of the table and see what that fucking doctor's doing to my fucking child. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And what's with these parents? Why don't these girls say anything? They're like, well, we, the doctor told us it was a necessary medical treatment. What in your right mind thinks that that's a necessary medical treatment? Someone's sticking the, your, their fingers up your vagina. Uh. When you're 15 and he's an adult. Male. What? Exactly. It's a, you know, I, it, you tell your kids, you tell your girls, no one has a right to do this thing to you unless you give them permission to do so. Including doctors. Including doctors. Especially doctors. Yes. Right, and if this shit happens, you need to let me know. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely, no doubt about it. No doubt about Don't it. Don't fucking keep your mouth fucking shut. Yeah. Right, I mean, same thing, that's sons too, and that's just girls with boys too. Damn right. Yeah. Who has the right to touch you unless you give in a certain area, unless you give them permission? Period. You, you, you don't, yeah, you don't know, yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, um, so, Speaking of uh, pedophiles and, and uh, molesters, here's Gary Glitter. Oh, speaking of glitter. Okay, that was uh, some girl named Jin Wigmore with a song called Hey Ho. <laughs> and uh, the uh, video was sufficiently freaky uh, <laughs> to make it the freakiest ball. Uh, yeah, it was anyway, a freaky video. It was a freaky video. I don't know who the girl is. I've never heard of her before. Um, anyway, before that, we had ACDC with a Riff Raff from the album, uh, well, the compilation album, Family Jewels, Bon Scott, doing the singing there. And uh, we kicked it off with uh, pedophile Gary Glitter, Doing rock and roll part two. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, sex spot thing. I want male and female virgins. I want them to be programmable. I want me to be able to set them so they can do more than just sex, okay? To me, a sex spot of being in a relationship is more than just sex. And so it's like, I want a sex bot. If I'm going to have some kind of sex bot or some kind of robot, period, I'm not just going to call mine a sex bot. He's a boyfriend bot. Okay. He's going to be able to fucking take the garbage out from me, run out there in the fucking cold, start my fucking car for me in the morning. Fucking, you know, I can set the dur duration time, you know, if you want longer, slower. You know, you can just set. You can set the hardness level. I mean, come on. Let's get real here. For men, you can set the tightness level. I'm not, you know. If it's good, I, I'll, my only thing with sex bots is they, they better fucking be mutually exclusive for both genders. What? What, what right? do you mean? What? There better be male and female versions. They better not just be a female version of a sex bot. Uh, that would be unfair to half the population. Over half the population. There's more women than there is men. You guys realize that, right? Right. Well, you know, if if um, if um, uh, I'd prefer a, a holodeck, holodeck. Well, that's fine. Because uh, know, that could, that I, I mean, uh, at least at least for the for the sex part, for the bot part, um, they they could just be a regular like Rosie the robot from from the Jetsons. Right. Right. Yeah. Like a, uh, a maid or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like from the Jetsons. But yeah, but, but, I love Rosie the robot. I would. I when I was a kid, I was like, would that be cool to have? <laughs> But but for the sex part, you know, the uh, right, yeah, de de definitely go with a, a, a holodeck. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so it should be adjustable. Like as you get older, like and start to age, like you, the bot will age too, at the same time as you do. Oh no no no! We don't I mean, want that. no, I think that would be the way to go. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> 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 no, you want the bot to stay hot the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's funny shit. What do you do with a bot? What do people do with the 
the bot? Where does the bot go when people die? It's, 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 the family just sells it to someone else. Right? Well, you, you, you know, you, you, you use leave, sex bot. Leave it, leave it. Use in your, sex bot for sale. Leave it, leave it in your will to <laughs> whoever. <laughs> Okay, now um, you asked earlier, and let me let me bring this up here. You asked earlier when <laughs> when the full moon was. Yes. So you don't know that there was a a full blo blue blood moon. Super moon was it Monday? Full super no. blue blood moon. Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. Um, okay. Wednesday. So so I here it. here for those of you that missed it, mm -hmm. is the eclipse in full okay. on the video on the video. Sorry for you audio oh, listeners. The Griffin, oh, yeah, there's a UFO on this. Check it out, people. This is really cool. I don't know if there's a UFO on this or not, but... Oh, not this one? Not, not, not oh, that. I better... Oh, did I save that one? I'll post that link for you guys. All right, I here it is. It. There's the moon. There's the... You got your full yeah, moon. This is it. This is the one. You got your full moon there. Watch. Keep watching. And you can see it starting, starting to fade in, getting a little dark on okay, the side. Keep watching. Getting a little dark. Yeah, it's covering cool. half. Oh, it gets half. I don't know what the little blips are. As it as it as it goes back and forth. There's three quarters. Do 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 do, do Full. Oh, almost. Not quite. Uh, there. It, it, there you go. It, it, so, it totally clear. Watch this part though. Watch this. I think this is the same video. I don't. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so there it is. It's all red looking. Blood moon. Okay. Full blood Probably red moon. And here, and here it comes back to the other side. It's coming, it's coming out of the shadow, coming out of the shadow. What did I do that for now? Looking yellow, looking orange. That was dumb. And then there it is setting. So there you go. Okay. Anybody that missed the, uh, anybody that missed the, the eclipse on the, the other this one, though, morning, you just saw it. Okay, let's see what we got yeah. here. Um, let's see what the one moose girl's got here. Yeah, it was from Cowboy Tech. Okay, from Cowboy Tech, UFO sighting during Blood Moon. Earlier this week. All right, let's see here. Couple days ago. I watch this. Just scroll up a little bit. No, that's it. It's centered. Just let it go. It looks like it comes from behind, though, Beth, to me. Oh, yeah, there it goes. I see it. There it is. Yeah. That could just be a falling star, though, couldn't it? Uh, who knows? It could, could be a satellite. That looked, to me, that looked cool. I mean, it, it's something there. It could, it could I don't have been a satellite. It could have been the ISS. Satellite. Satellites don't go that fast, though. Unless well, it was, well, a, it was, a, it was a time, time lapse thing, though, you know? Right, yeah. So it could have been True. the I, it could have been the ISS or whatever. We don't know. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, so. But that looked kind of interesting. Yeah, neat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> of course they're gonna say it's a UFO sighting, but that is the definition of UFO. UFO, unidentified flying object. Yeah. Unidentified. We don't know what it is. Right. Flying object. Obviously, we do not know what it is. It's unidentified. Right. Right. So, you so, so you were talking about they better have equal for for women as they have for men on the sex bots. Yes, okay. robots. Period. I well, mean, come on, they should be custom customizable. Well, how no. how how? <laughs> how about this? Well, maybe besides only just body type and boob size and hair color and all that well, crap. So, tell me, tell me what you think about this. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think about snacks? What? Snacks. I mean, you know, like che you know, cheese puffs or, or, or Doritos or whatever. Doritos or whatever? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Are yeah, those, what are those, are those more for men or more for women? They're for, they're neutral gender, gender neutral. That's what I thought. That's what I always thought. <laughs> <laughs> but here, but here from Salon.com today comes this oh, article. Oh, God, Salon, really? Yeah. Pepsi is developing women-only snacks because... What? Yeah. Right, hang on. Uh, Pepsi is developing <laughs> women-only snacks because potato chips are so hard for girls. 
What? Because I eat potato chips a, uh, not a lot, but every once in a while I have a sandwich or something. I'll, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let you read here. I'll post the link. You can read it yourself. But <laughs> it's funny uh, that, yeah, potato chip girls, girls, you know, they can't, they can't handle like the, the 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 cheese powder from nacho cheese Doritos or or stuff. So so now Pepsi is going to have these women only snacks. <laughs> I was talking about fighting like a girl, but now I'm eating like a girl, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. You girls can't handle potato chips, barely. Uh, whatever, <laughs> Pepsi. You fucking suck, you assholes. What the fuck? Way to go, you fucking sexist kid. Well, good evening, everybody. This really? Is your, Come uh, on now. Now you're just harassing us. What, you need Vinny. more money? Move on. Move on, girl. Uh, can, what? Can, can you hear Vinny? No, I cannot. Well, say hi to him. Hi, Vinny. Oh, I'm going to mute I so I, I can unmute the player so I can hear you. Is she talking? Yeah. But yeah, hey, good, neither good, one good that you're calling in. Good. I'm you, glad you're still kicking, man. Neither one of you can hear each other, so. You're doing Vin, great. Vin, you're Vin, doing Vin, Vinny, awesome. Vinny says hi, Moosey. Moosey says hi, Vinny. And you have okay, an awesome press pass. Okay, give her a coke and a smile for me and a, a bag of chips so. and I will mute now so I can hear you. All right, good. So And hold on for the ride. So. Yeah, we gotta have some zombie flavored uh, Cheetos at some point in time, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like a human potato chip. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you and I have. Uh, if I can quit squiggling around here, I'm gonna type this in. But you and I have a uh, 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 equal, I think, uh, liking for the zombie genre. So look here. This is how I'm. This is. I've got the title of my book. It's called Zombie, believe it or not. But watch, watch how I do this in chat. Okay. All right. So the the I E right, right. So V O M E, and then there's a little space in between, and then I dot E dot. As in, for <laughs> so, example. Yes, for example, right there. Uh, perfect. So book one, we call them Zoms. Now let me get over here. I've got my headlamp on. I'm outside, out back. So uh, then. Kind of semi camping mood, mode that is. Zombie, the archived events of the end of the world, a series of zombie apocalypses. We call them Zebs, book one. Zeb. And that's pretty good on paper. No, that sounds great. That's a that'll that'll draw in the people. So I didn't say Zebs. I hope it's Zoms. We call them Zoms. Yeah, Zom. So I, I've got to work on that and make it into maybe a uh, anagram or something. Z O M B, zombie uh, something there, but definitely a uh, anagram. What do you think? Work on that. Let me let me hear what you uh, y'all think. If you can come up with something good on that. So, oh crap, uh, <laughs> things are falling down. I got things everywhere. I got a book, excellent book. Uh, only by only by blood and suffering. It's uh, regaining lost fit freedom. It's a novel by Lavoy Finicum. Now, uh, last time I spoke about this, I was uh, up to chapter eight, and I'm up to I think fourteen or fifteen now. Let me go forward. But I, here in a little bit, I just want to read a couple of pages out of the very beginning of it. Yeah, I think I'm at fourteen in fourteen. One, I stopped. I paused at page one hundred one. And uh, that's talking about love right there, I think, uh, or what I see love coming anyways. Uh, I have several, several topics to talk about tonight. I, I got an email. And uh, I would back up and, and refer some to this uh, idea of rules of journalism and, and media and this sort of thing. And uh, my interactions up here in Las Vegas at the federal courthouse with uh, a lot of members of uh, mainstream media uh, it has been pretty educational for me. Uh, I've never, you know, been in that type of situation or surrounding before and myself suffering uh, in, the, in, in lacking uh, some certain skills. So I uh, honing what I got and uh, building some more. <clears throat> so moving forward as uh, minor media, uh, I, I am. And uh, I'm, I'm still here in Vegas. Uh, we head back out to the desert for a little bit, uh, week, 10 days, something. The uh, dismissal 
Well, I'm sorry. The calendar call is coming up February 15th for the Bundy trial. And um, that has uh, Mel and Dave Bundy and uh, Captain, Captain Mo, Joe Shaughnessy, and uh, uh, Jason Woods to uh, return to see if uh, they've got a face trial. Now, uh, Bobby, uh, was it Bobby Franklin? Bobby Payne. Sorry, guys. Uh, one of y'all had made point that uh, the one dismissal should have uh, thrown it all out. And, uh, of course, I think that uh, that's exactly correct. <clears throat> Even everybody that's t- taken a plea and been, si- been sentenced or are waiting sentencing. Because now I'll, I'll tell you, for example, I, what I think would have happened had things gone the other way. When uh, Pete said until he went back for sentencing, I bet he, she would have done him just like she did Jerry Dilemmas and uh, stacked some on. You know, I wouldn't have been surprised she'd give him uh, five, six, eight years, three at the minimum. <clears throat> but I don't think she was going to hand down any kind of sentences like Anna Brown was doing up there in uh, in Portland, Oregon. Now, she got spiteful, and she's got to have dementia. Now, if you've not seen that, uh, I made a post and over there of a, a video that uh, Miss B. Stacy put up from uh, YouTube, and uh, that was kind of uh, uh, giving an intro for uh, Kelly Stewart's vid- video that she did, and uh, she talked about this decision. Now, <laughs> let me tell you what it was. She says she's a danger. We're talking about Jake Ryan now. I'm sorry. She says the man, the man's dangerous and needed to be detained. He just had a detaining hearing or detention hearing. I'm sorry, and so she orders him detained. Now she had allowed him to be released in Las Vegas, you know, after he's acquitted there, uh, or I mean, the dismissal came with prejudice there from Navarro, along with Clive and Bundy and uh, uh, Ryan and Ammon Bundy as well. Um, let him go. Now, Kelly was telling the story of how he was the transport. She says, now this is Anna Brown in Oregon. She's talking about, um, well, you know, it was going to be expensive for the uh, federal agents to have to go through all this rigmarole. I mean, they had to have six or eight, 10 or 12 vehicles, whatever that number was, and uh, be able to move them along transport. Why don't we just let him go and let him get himself back up here to Portland? for this detention hearing right here to see whether we want to hold him or not. Well, they decided to hold him pending sentencing. <laughs> and said, says, I'm laughing. I, I'm sorry. You know, I should be laughing, but it, if it's, you know how you laugh at, at uh, stupid people? Well, I, this is beyond stupid what Anna Brown has done. She's saying he's too dangerous to be out on the street, but let him out down there in Vegas and have several days, you know, uh, pending, uh, running around the world, had some restrictions and, you know, uh, curfew and, and uh, travel. And he never went outside those bounds. But because he stopped by the Bundy Ranch and uh, took some pictures. Now, you didn't locked up for two years and been standing for standing for this man right here. And as all turns out, all the information tells us, that Clive and Bundy was right. He feared another Waco or Ruby, Ruby Ridge. He was surrounded by an army. Right. They had going to kill him. Guarantee you they were going to kill him. And I have to give uh, kudos to Pete Santilli because I believe that uh, uh, were not for uh, his word going out, uh, the numbers of people would not have been um, uh, gotten to. You know, that, that many people would not have known known about this, and uh, um, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened the same way. You know, I don't think they counted on uh, thousands of people to show up. And uh, I, I showed up at uh, the day before uh, Clavin was up there telling Sheriff Gillespie how the cow eats the cabbage. And that's what I like to call my Forrest Gump moment where I'm on the uh, stage up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. That that's a little bit longer story, and I've told it before, and uh, we'll probably tell it again. I'm certain. Uh, so a- anyways, uh, moving along here, we've we've got people that have been um, attacked. Uh, there's been uh, obvious tactics and collusion. Uh, I mean, we can take this to Rico 
on uh, the crimes of the government, crimes of the state, hashtag. Uh, it's, it's not a pretty sight. A lot of people realize it, and more people are realizing it. Now, this is, uh, this is a tactic that's been going on for uh, years, for decades. And, and uh, one by one, they've been knocking people out. Uh, not only the rancher, but there's a lot of other people just moved off, pushed off. And uh, it's all done in the name of uh, um, conservation and uh, ecology. And um, there's a lot of names. And unfortunately, the, the, uh, what they're hiding is, is extremism and, and theft. These are done by the, the stocking horse, the, the cover of uh, hiding behind that third party in that sneak attack until uh, uh, you're not counting the legs uh, of rifles over the top of the saddle and putting a bullet right through you and taking you out. And that's uh, that's what they've done. I, I mean, they've exampled it, and they're not afraid to do it. They killed one cowboy up in Oregon. I mean, that ain't nothing for them right there. And then they police their bullets and cover it all up and uh you know lie and uh, but uh no it's it's not that what nothing for them to do that i mean they, they killed 80 some odd people in in waco shot a woman in the doorway of her home holding her baby yeah up ruby ridge sure did <clears throat> you know talking about yeah. law enforcement go uh, ahead, the, go ahead. The, go ahead the, the cops the cops have killed over 100 people the u.s cops Hundred people did just in January alone. Uh, you know, throughout the United States, they just go around killing people. And um, so, I mean, you, you look at that number there. The cops in, in just in the U.S. Uh, have killed a hundred, hundred over a hundred people in January. You look at other countries that, uh, like Germany, you know, they don't even kill ten people in a year. And so, so you know that there's a problem. There's a problem with the cops. There's a problem with their mentality. That that that, that for some reason uh, they feel like they've got a need or uh, uh, to, to to go around just murdering folk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I got this. Uh, I got this email. Now, is what I've done is. Uh, they gave it to me with permission to use your name and everything, the fullness of it. I got to thinking. I got to thinking about it. And, uh, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I want to give him a chance to, uh, uh, decide if he wants to put his name in, uh, where, where he's at because, uh, that would, you know, give, make him a target. I don't know if he had time to consider that. So, uh, for that, I'm going to give him, uh, time for, uh, recollect, recollection on that. And uh, as well, I'm going to talk to uh, one of the uh, reporters that I met that works at the publication. So this is a, le a letter to the editor and was not, it was not published. So I want to just call and ask this old boy, what the, what's the procedure on that? I mean, what if, uh, what if this one guy that wrote the letter would like to resubmit it or <clears throat> something like that, right? Well, I, I did a... Uh, a WordPress here, Vince U C Y T V WordPress and uh called Fake News Now Fake Laws. <clears throat> so it, it's a bit long. <clears throat> I better have a drink of water before I start. It's not real long, it's three long paragraphs. One sec. <laughs> okay, I believe I'm. I, I believe I'm ready. Uh, Better uh, do re me, do re me. <clears throat> okay, unpublished letter to the editor. Fake news. <clears throat> now fake laws by redacted. So I've got some redacted redacteds in here, and uh, I just took up all the information except for <clears throat> one one piece, one clue. And uh, some people, of course, it was in truncated now, but. Some people know a little bit more than uh, others about where this uh, rig originally occurred at. <clears throat> so I'll start with it. And this is in a first-hand narrative, and uh, it's the person that's writing. Writing with my bicycle to work on Redacted was an interesting experience with the Redacted PD. 
Riding on the sidewalk to avoid dangerous traffic, I had to pass through a group of men and officers who were detaining a suspect. I find that interesting, a group of men and officers right there. <clears throat> so going on, he says, uh, where are my scrubs and my flight jacket from the Navy, plus having a clean conscience, uh, I confidentially, pass, uh, co- confidently passed through the group, first announcing, Coming through, make a hole, please. The reaction I get from a uniformed officer rudely stating how I was in violation of law by riding on the sidewalk. He placed doubt in my mind, so I complied to his demand to ride in the street. However, when I arrived at my redacted job, I promptly redacted search engine. (laughs) Guess what I redacted there? (laughs) What in Yahoo? Google. Uh, (laughs) The subject. Now I've lost my train of thought. Back up here. Hold on. So after he gets to his job and he, he uh, Googles this here thing uh, about the uh, riding on the sidewalk business, right? And he also spoke with the traffic division at the Metro PD. I learned that the uh, municipal code allows an individual to ride on sidewalks with only certain areas specified as off limits, like uh, downtown certain spots they're redacted and on highways you can ride or areas specific unless they are specifically uh designated as no <clears throat> bicycle uh bicycle uh, zones i like to ride my bicycle okay so he says i'm a, a, a redacted uh, i even took it how old he was out <laughs> I think I let in one thing. Yeah, 25 years experience coming up. So he's uh, he's a uh, uh, this aged man, and he rides his bike to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So saying uh, he has no desire to be uh, plummeted by a moving vehicle, as this would be counterproductive to his goals. As a medical professional with 25 years, uh, he believes that the uh, colloquialism, physician, heal thyself. He believes that he says. Uh, Yet his well-being was jeopardized by the arrogance of a local police officer who uh, he discovered was spouting off fake laws, trying to control his behavior. So he's going on. He said he's always been a law-abiding citizen, and that uh, he's uh, in time he's come to uh, develop a distrust of the law. So he's worked, he says, uh, closely with them in hospitals throughout his career. Remember, uh, and he remembers an incident up in Utah, and y'all may may, may as well, is that nurse that uh, uh, she was doing her job, you know, trying to protect that uh, protect her patient and the, uh, the, you know, from the cop up there. Y'all remember what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Sorry, I'm not in chat, right? Yeah. So she was in the right. Wait a minute. I hit the button and it scrolled. Uh and the cops are, you know, breaking the law. So he, I'll skip ahead just a little bit. He, what he goes on to explain is that uh, this is a nearly a universal hostility of the police force towards her citizens, he says, which uh, they have sworn to protect and serve. It must be inherent in their training. Having traversed the country for eight years, he's uh, noticed that uh, there's a trend that all the, uh, nearly all the registered nurses are plagued with a condition known as, uh, it's known as nursitis, and it manifests itself with a, uh, a low, low level of arrogance and an unwillingness to learn beyond their profession. There are exceptions, of course, with many uh, magnificent nursing professionals, he says, and they amaze them with confidence and professionalism and demeanor and attention to details. He says the same goes with police officers. However, uh, both sides, both both uh, professions, I mean, have uh, they believe uh, and are conditioned in their training to believe in their superiority over uh, their fellow man, and this interferes with their uh, primary mission, uh, and their primary mission state statements. What the medical is to do no harm, and uh, from the police is supposed to be uh, uh, to protect and to serve. But he goes on to say and, and close out that uh, um, yeah, it is 
it applies to the medical profession as well as the law enforcement. And uh, I hope, he says, I hold no hope that this affliction, which I dub copitis, will ever be cured. But recognition is always the first step. So definitely a good place to start, I guess. And when you can't get a letter like this published in the uh, in your local uh, newspaper that's supposed to be representing truth and presenting it and asking questions, what do you do? What do you do? You make your own. You publish it yourself. Well, that's what we did. And uh, we'll bring it back around and take a look at it and see how much farther I go with it. Um, but anyways, I do want to... Um, Try to go through that. Ken Ritter, uh, which I, I find to uh, have a little less credibility with me now than when I wrote the, the statement back there about them uh, referring to ourselves as media uh, business over there that she did with NPR, uh, or NPR did with Kay Wiles, that is. Um, but anyways, uh, I got some notes here, a uh, bunch of them. Yeah, oh, back to my zombie apocalypse. Uh, definitely needs uh, some Tarantino in it, though, for sure. <laughs> <coughs> did, 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 you, did you see the uh, Tarantino <clears throat> Star Trek thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it, man. Yeah, <laughs> Tarantino, my favorite anyways, right? And Star Trek, yeah, I'm a Trekkie, so <clears throat> put them together. Wow, huh? Yeah. Hard to beat that. I know. So, uh, here, come here, do it. <clears throat> it's not working. There it is. Hold that. Uh, well, we'll we'll have to come back to 420 report. At the, we're three minutes late, but no, let's do it real quick. It's like uh, twenty eight point nine or eight five percent. It's called head cheese. Cost uh, seventeen dollars and fifty two cents for a gram, and uh, if anybody knows what a <clears throat> one hundred quitter is, well, this one here is man. It's uh, it's pretty expensive, but you know what? <clears throat> I mean, comparatively, but uh, you can get a uh, for twenty bucks a gram in Arkansas. This right here probably will tell them maybe fifty bucks in the black market, you know. But they made it legal there in Arkansas, medical anyways. But you know how that'll go. Everybody will have a, a condition that will get it. And then who's making all the money? Right here, pretty high when you consider the price up in Spokane where you can go get uh, an ounce for 65 bucks an OZ at discount. But that's a pretty good price, I say. Sure. It's uh, You know what? What held consistently against gold and silver, <clears throat> Bitcoin wasn't around. The dollar well, was always consistent, and I never really understood. Now, the only inconsistency to the uh, consistency <laughs> is the, uh, <laughs> I thought that was funny, is the, uh, the price in uh, California is always, was always double. So it'd be like 20 fuck, 25 bucks uh, an eighth in California, where, where everybody else or everywhere else it was uh, $25 a quarter. And that was, you know, your, your standard, uh, commercial grade uh pot <clears throat> but that's that changed when the uh when the medical uh pot came along <clears throat> and it started that trend and so now the price of weed uh is the same as it costs off the black market so it's not really free by being being <clears throat> legalized <clears throat> it just well, back, you know, transfers. back in the day we could get an ounce of mexican for for 20 bucks yeah but you're really old <laughs> well, where is that? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let me hear it. Let me see here. Uh, if I've read myself out or not, I do uh, want to get up here. <clears throat> it's three pages, and I don't know if I want to read three. Maybe I could read just a little bit and then step, skip well, through. Well, if, the, if uh, you want, just give, <clears throat> just give me the link, and I'll put it into the, into the post-show blog. Um, well, it's a book. I don't know if there's a PDF. Oh, well, I read thing. this the other day. On, on uh, I read this article. No, the which article? The one that you're oh, no. reading from about the guy riding his bicycle down the road. No, this is uh, somebody else. I just posted it. It's brand new. 
Oh, okay. Just now. Just now. I put it here. I, I grab it again. <clears throat> I, uh, I just published this. I just pressed this at WordPress. And it, this is, uh, yeah, it's not in the news or anything. This is an email I just got yesterday. And uh, so and I, I started out right there. Kind of uh, I, read, I, read the story about, I read the story about the guy riding his bike, and the cop made him go on the road, and he looked it up. Well, I'd like to... I'd like to see that one because this is uh, uh, this isn't the same guy. Unless uh, where'd you see it at? Where's I don't it at? Know. I, it was there was a link on Minds or on Twitter or something. Uh, yeah, I put them up there just this past a uh, couple hours. Okay, and and yeah, this is the same story. The same one I just posted. Just well, now? The, the 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 part the the unpublished letter. Yeah, yeah, I no, put that up. That's the same story that I read. Or, or, yeah, a couple of days ago. No, couldn't have been. Yeah, Find that link. You have you been? Did you take a nap tonight? <laughs> 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 well, was was your was your first pet named Dino? <laughs> Dino. <laughs> yeah, he was always he trying to eat my brother. <laughs> always trying to eat my brontosaurus <laughs> burgers. <laughs> Let me start with a little bit that's on a serious matter. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to go back to my note, but uh, only by blood and suffering, uh, by Lavoy Finicum, and I met his wife up there, and you know, I just there there was no words that I could give to her to to, to express myself. Really, just takes uh, what what really happened. And and it's coming out. She's got a lawsuit, a wrongful death. And you know some of the cover up, you know, of course that um and I was saying earlier the cops uh, uh you know, shot and lied about it. Shauna Cox is in there and um Sharp and uh um <clears throat> Ryan Bundy and you know, he took uh son in the arm there. I you know, I never have found out if he got that removed since he's been out. <clears throat> But anyway, so this book that Lavoie wrote, it's a novel, and it's a, a post-apocalyptic novel. It's after things crash and go bad. Uh, I, it is good. It's pretty good. If you like a thriller and a fast pack, and, and you know, the zombie apocalypse, uh, like I was talking about, it's uh, one of my favorite, and also the, the uh, post-apocalyptic scenario, and this is it. And it starts out just right away. <clears throat> fast, fast. All right, I've got my headlamp adjusted. Let's try it. <clears throat> well, before I do, I probably ought to take one drink of water real quick. So what do you think about the uh, uh, post-apocalyptic genre, Jeremy? Uh, that's my favorite. <clears throat> Mine too. Almost ready. Ready? <clears throat> and <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Thanks, Frumpy, and uh, I believe it was Kate that helped me uh, make myself a little bit more clearer when I was sharing this. So uh, some of y'all got to see what I, I shared on that uh, that article. You saw all the information except for who it was from, and, uh, and y'all helped me get that little outline started there for uh, introducing it as an email from somebody else. All right, so here we go. Uh, four men of the gang hit Mom's house fast and professionally. Two at the front door and two at the back door. With some sort of battery ramp. So as well, both doors were breached simultaneously with the shattering of glass and the splintering of woods. They swept qu- quickly into the home, holding a mixture of semi-automatic pistols, and they cleared each room from the downstairs as efficiently as any SWAT team. She moves on to action really fast, the writer does here, LaVoy. Finicum and wrote it, and uh, it, it's gunplay uh, and fast action and survival clean on through. <clears throat> I, I read a little bit on um, uh, our reality this last Tuesday with uh, Ava, or Eva, I'm sorry, and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be doing some radio on, on Tuesdays for about an hour every week over there with her producing, and I call in and <clears throat> not have to worry about where I'm at and um, having the ability, which I don't anyways. So, 
kind of an inspiring book too. Not not only for what we see coming, you know, crash, economic crash. So, so many people are not going to be able to survive it. <clears throat> They're really not. It's going to be a real hard, hard time. And we see how people in this book. Uh, I've up, uh, like I said, pretty close to halfway through. We see uh, how people. And society breaks down real quick from and how wicked and evil some people are, where you'll have to uh, uh, take a stand, uh, evil or darkness. And uh, it makes me ask my, myself, you know, what kind of wickedness and uh, uh, a darkness does somebody have to really possess or, you know, or, or are they possessed? You know, my, one might think of uh, uh, them being obsessed and like, like these people and they even... They even have a name like they're a demon. Uh, a goblin uh, lies is all I'm going to say, and that's that is a mouthful. So, stand in the st- sunlight. It's the best disinfectant. Uh, disinfectant. <laughs> I can't talk, Anna. I won't be tongue tied. It's the best disinfectant. And truth is a beautiful thing. And what what's really beautiful about that is it's so easy to tell. And I really like the way Mrs. Mrs. Bundy says that, and uh, Emmett Bundy, I believe, uh, is uh, known to have been said that a time or two himself. <clears throat> oh, here we go. <laughs> oh man, I was so mad. I get out when I when I went camping, right? I spent eleven days out, and I took a bunch of food. And here's here's my here's my example. I cited. So who makes Chef Boyardee? Uh, Conagra does. <clears throat> You know what? I had ten cans of these things, and I had them planned for like a you know a lunch meal with uh, some saltine crackers. And I just love the boyardees in a can. Pop a top and eat them right out of the can. Don't worry about eating them. So I get a batch that uh, uh, they're the the pasta is like you know not even al dente. It's almost it's like partially you know it's like rubbery type, not cooked. And the, the sauce is like real watery, like it's not been cooked and condensed. <clears throat> so I get it out here, out there, and here I am stuck with uh, these things. And I tried to eat one can. I, I just, if I was hungry, 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 yeah, I could. But uh, they just, just not nice. So I call up the company, and they, uh, I, you know, I figured they ought to make it right. Well, it took a good. 20 near 30 minutes of talking to these people to make them understand that uh, I'm not accepting their what their policy is. They said, well, they could send me uh, four coupons at a dollar a piece, a dollar off per can. And so I said, you know, I'm not I'm not happy with uh, uh, four cans being replaced for 10. Uh, my inconvenience and the uh, aggravation, especially, you know, and the disappointment. And uh, it was all part of my plan. I said, you can just keep them four cans and stack them up and set them is what I wanted to tell her, but I didn't. <clears throat> uh, so, and I said a bunch of other things, and uh, she decided that she was going to break policy after all and send me 10 coupons for $10, or you know, a dollar a piece, and, uh, and actually replace what I felt like they should have done to make right anyways. Uh, kind of reminds me of what I saw today, the Chihuahua what about a Chihuahua? What if a Chihuahua was as big <laughs> as a, a Great Dane? That it could kill a could kill a dinosaur. You ever see anything like that back then? Did the dogs? Did they have big Chihuahuas back in the dinosaur days, Grimmer? Oh yeah, yeah. Because those were just like <laughs> snacks, you know, for the, uh, <laughs> the dinosaurs. Some kind of Napoleon complex or something. Yeah. Huh? <clears throat> Okay, let me flip a page. What do you, what do you think about the Chihuahua? You ever? I, I saw one kill uh, Saint Bernard one time. A little Chihuahua did. Well, they they can they can stand up for themselves. Yeah. 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 You've uh, you've seen the meme where the uh, frogs holding the neck of the uh, the uh, the stork there in the swamp, uh, hang on, baby, trying to fight <laughs> well, a Chihuahua. Chihuahua, you know, you know, go down and. Right, and jump down his throat and choke him to death and die in the process. I saw some uh, some mean flag uh, flag of uh, the, a snake holding a pin on a grenade. Said, "Don't make me kill us all." And it's kind of trying to make it look to me like a reminiscent of the Gaston flag or something. The uh, 
uh, those ones said don't tread on tread on me, right? With the snake on it, the yellow one. Right. Yeah. You. You. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen the. Uh, well, we call it a meme. This is like pre-meme era. Uh, cartoon maybe. Uh, there's a eagle swooping down towards a, a like a mouse, some some small rodent. And the rodent's slipping off the eagle because he knows he's going to die there. And it says, right. the last great act of defiance. <clears throat> yes, I have seen that. It was good. <laughs> so, Groundhog Day, eh? Yeah. Well, we was talking a little bit about that in chat. Let me flip All right, that. Well, yeah, we got to, we got to, I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to play some more. Is it time to, okay, yeah. it's time I've run a while, Anna. Yeah, yeah, you know how you are. You, you like to. <laughs> <laughs> Groundhog Day. All right, I'll finish out real quick with Groundhog Day and Grandpa. And uh, I asked in chat if anybody ever read a Groundhog, and uh, Beth asked me if I had. And I said no, but my grandpa had. He used to like them. And I caught him a Groundhog one day hunting and brought him back when I was a little kid, and he said it was too old and too tough to eat. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, he did his part in trying to uh, stop this uh, Groundhog Day business been going on. So, listen, if you see a groundhog, take him out. Let's, uh, let's change the future, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Graham. All right. Okay. I was going to say 20 with Vinny, but it uh, would be plenty, but it looked like we went way right past that. It's a good thing because the battery's going to die out here, too, so on the computer I carried outside. Yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks, man. All right, thanks for calling. Go holla. Yeah, bye. Thanks, bud. All right. Vincent Easily 2. Or don't call him Junior. He don't want to be called Junior. <laughs> hey, Junior. All right. This is uh, a song you all know ca called... A psychotic reaction. Yeah, that's just good solid rock and roll right there. That was Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons with Ringleader. Before that, we had the Rascals from 1969 doing People Got to Be Free. And we kicked it off on that set with the cramps doing uh, Count Five's uh, psych uh, psychotic reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good stuff all the way through there. Uh, right, right. So uh, I I anyway, um, I, I, I know I said at the beginning, the top of the show, I wasn't going to mention this again, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it. For I mean, there's the people here that have, that weren't here at the top of the show. Just to let you all know, this is the uh, time of our annual donation drive to keep the uh, servers and, and such going. So uh, you know where the donate button is on the front of the Real Liberty Media page? Just uh, go there and, and click donate and uh, send us over some bucks. We'll appreciate it. It'll be great. And uh, we'll, we'll keep your uh, all, all your favorite shows here on Real Liberty Media uh, going. And and the site going. Yeah. Yeah. So. You guys appreciate, you know, the time you spend here. I mean, this includes the chat room. Not just if you listen to every show. You know, it's just to support the people that um, entertain you, I guess. Um, uh, we don't get paid for doing this. And um, we have a good time doing this. It's not like that. You know, it's not like we're doing this. You know, it's, it's not a job. <laughs> we want to. Yeah, uh, anti-Hannah asked who is a good... And Grimner is, and I'm sorry, but Grimner is, he's the one funding this, this gig here. So yeah. any any kickback you can give back to him, be it five bucks, ten bucks, it helps. Yeah. You know? Anyway, anti-Hannah... Anti anti yeah, what I'm saying, it doesn't have to be a huge amount. It just has to be something. R right, yeah. We, yeah we, we, there's, it's, it's a, you mean. know... It, it's uh, not an expensive operation, but it is several hundred dollars a year. Um, okay, so there you go. It's several hundred dollars. So what, we're talking 700 Oh, no, uh, about 400 for the total. Oh, okay, yeah. 400 
Any, no, anyway, so uh, Ant Ant Anti Han asks, "Who are the good people who have donated today?" I don't know because I closed my uh, Thunderbird before I come on the air. Uh, so I'll I'll find out after after the show when I start closing closing processes down. But right. uh, I've got right. I've so got. He's a, broadcasting, so he can't like look it up right now. Yeah, there's, there's a ton of stuff going on uh, on my right. computer all at once, and so uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um. But um, yeah, no, it's a once a year thing. Like we're not pushy like those other, like NPR and all them. That's like you know, even WHYS, yeah. my community radio station only does it like once a year. Yeah, you know, it just takes a, it, it just takes you know? the, it just takes so there's a lot of processes running on the computer in order to do a video show. Um, right. <laughs> so, you know, you know, I got my 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 my, my camera thingy, and I got my recorder thingy, and I got uh, two different voice apps going, and I got my my uh, notepad thingy, and uh, and. Uh, right. There's all these, and he's got like he's dealing with two computers, two monitors. Like he's got like control tower central there, basically, yeah. or whatever you call it, like a Star Trek. What do they call that? The fucking where everything is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Moose Girl will do a, a live on the radio pole dance. Not, um, not, what? Not, 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 not on the video on the radio pole oh, dance. No, um, that's never gonna happen. I'm way too busy. That's one thing. And another thing. Fuck glitter. Fuck glitter. All right. Uh, anyway, um, let, me, let me let me give you this little helpful hint. Uh, you know, before we run out of time here. A little helpful hint. <laughs> Simple home elixir to stop a cough immediately. Okay. Uh, it says a persistent cough is painful and frustrating. It can be used by uh, or caused by everything from a dry throat to sinus drainage to asthma. And they give you here grandma's favorite cough cure. And All right. Here's, here's the ingredients. One and a half cups of organic raw honey. One half cup of organic extra virgin olive oil. One to five organic lemons juiced, the more the better, Ooh. the more the better, and then a glass right. jar with a lid. So you just add, add the honey, olive oil, and lemon juice to the small pot, stir well, heat, heat over medium heat, uh, just until steaming, and then remove it from the heat and allow it, allow it to cool. Once it's cool, put the mixture into the jar, cover it with a lid, and then uh, you just use one tablespoon of that when needed. Uh, nice. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to make some of that because I have all those ingredients at my house. You have lemons? Uh, no, I have to go get those. I have to go grocery shopping tomorrow. So. <laughs> I got all I'm that except the, I got I got all that except the lemons, you know. Uh, yep. And I have a juicer thing that I can use that I have not used. But there it is. Handy, <laughs> handy helpful hints from your friends here at Real Liberty Media. Yes, I will um, bookmark this for tomorrow. And and I, and I also uh, wanted to uh, to mention this here. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> little tech note. <laughs> I saw this on the Twitter today, and I commented on it, and several people said, "Yeah, that's right," and retweeted it. And, uh, so, anyways, it's the uh, the article on Gizmodo. Windows 10 finally beats out eight-year-old operating system Windows 7. And so my comment there on the Twitter was, yeah, they, it beat it out because they're forced, people are forced to use it if they buy a new computer. <laughs> it's not that people want to go to Windows 10, it's that they're forced into doing it if they buy a new freaking computer. So um, <laughs> I don't really have anything right. else. That's the thing, like you look at Sam's Club or whatever, you Walmart or wherever, Best Buy, don't matter. You look at these computers, these brand new ones, they all have Windows 10. All of them. Right, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, yeah. You, you can't, you can't, you can't find, um, you can't find a uh, a, a new uh, computer. Well, yes, you can, but um, right, but, but it's it, they're, they're, they're very different. They're, they're very difficult to find. Um, a lemon tree? No, you can't grow a lemon tree inside the house. Lemon trees. Really? Lemon, lemon trees put off a very. Um, Oh, uh, acidic no. output and like any, anything that was growing underneath uh, the area where a lemon tree grows, it will all die. Okay, so yeah. see, in yeah. Wisconsin, we can't grow lemon trees. Oh, then. well. No, we're fucked. We can't grow lemon trees in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let me mention uh, real quick here okay. that uh, tomorrow you got you got your dark table at noon. 
uh, with uh, Grammy and Flash. That, that's a great show. Tune in for that. On Sunday, you got the uh, my, well, my blues show. Uh, it starts at noon Eastern. Uh, and we have trivia here in the chat. Then you got Hal Anthony at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, behind the woodshed. And Gary L. and Gigi's Boo. Hopefully, they're better this week. They were sick last week, uh, doing the road uh, less uh, traveled. But uh, we have to do this one thing, this this one other thing right now. Um, and I, I, I know you'll all enjoy it. Okay. Uh, the lovely stoner train there doing Black Betty to uh, close things out here on this show, on this February 2nd show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so thanks, everybody, for tuning in and uh, chatting it up there and requesting songs yeah, and all thanks, that everyone. stuff. Uh, what's that? Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Y'all have yeah. a great weekend. Talk to you later. Peace.